Norman Dewis, Chief Development Test Engineer for Jaguar. This was one I developed <coughs> with Jaguar. This was a new, new, new technique of building. We were the first out with it. It has no chassis frame. You have the centre tub, <coughs> bulkhead, uh, suspension bolted to the bulkhead with a frame and one with the back. So it's, it's a three part uh, construction. So we were the first out with it and of course as you can see it's nice and compact and uh, for, for its day it was the lowest drag uh, in the wind tunnel that they'd had. A very very good car. I raced uh, in 55 Le Mans, but then I raced another one uh, in America at uh, Laguna Seca. I raced there twice. Goodwood, nine hour, I raced. Uh, that was the last nine hour of Goodwood, 55. I finished fourth there, you know. Oh, this is one of the favourite. The only one that supersedes this, which I considered a very new new venture, was the XJ13. That was a new venture, a new type venture. Rear engine behind the driver. Uh, that would have been a good potential car for Le Mans. Oh, the uh, XJ13, yes. It was... Uh, 1961 when we uh, started developing it we was in no hurry we were intended to go back to Le Mans and so there was no rush to get it completely developed uh, so I was fitting it in with the rest of my work and uh, at the time I'd got it almost developed there was only the tyre test to do uh, they'd alter the regs at Le Mans to three litres, so that put the car out completely. So then it was uh, stored in the experimental shop uh, right through till 1971 when we were launching the E-Type with a three litre engine. So what the uh, publicity said would, we'd do a film showing the XJ13, because that was the first car to have the, the V12, showing the XJ13 going round the banking, then switch from that onto the Series 3E. So we get over to Myra. We do all this still shots, sitting like this, standing by it. Then they said uh, in the afternoon, can you do four fast laps on the banking? And uh, we'll have a camera set up on the on one of the posts. I was on the third lap when uh, I got onto the banking, do, always get on the banking doing about 140, when the, the car suddenly lurched, I hit the safety fence, spun round, went onto the infield and did about three or four nose and tails and then battle rolls. Uh, fortunately, it finished up on the uh, right way up so I climbed out and, uh, you know, that was it. The, the, the amusing thing was when the, uh, the film crew came down to where I'd crashed it and uh, my mechanics in the Jaguar, they slowly came down and stopped, got out the car. They said, you all right, Norman? I said, yeah, not so bad. They said, where's the car? I said, in the field. They said, what the hell? I said, where you been? I said, I could have been killed, trapped underneath it. They said, oh, we thought you'd run out of petrol. <laughs> that was the excuse. But uh, so that, uh, that pretty well destroyed the XJ13. It was put under a sheet, oh, for over 12 months. Uh, Lofty England had now become the uh, director, manager, senior one. He came to me and said, well, what could we do with this, Norman? I said, well, I don't know. I said, all the mechanical stuff's perfect. It's only body. 
So we got in touch with uh, Abbey Panels, who did the body. Uh, what did they think? They said, well, we've still got the, uh, the jigs and tools for the body. So we made a new, made a new body and uh, rebuilt the car and it's now in, in existence. We, we drive it occasionally, but it's mostly in the museum. But that is, that is a car which would have, I think, done very well at Le Mans. I, I think the max uh, top speed I had was 205 out of it, you know. I'd already lapped my... Uh, I'd got the lap record with the D-type at 156. The XJ13 I lapped at 160, over 160. Very impressive, yeah, beautiful.